Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. In this video, I am going to be using Mimic brushes for the first time. I have chosen to paint a watercolor portrait to try them out, so keep watching to find out how I did and what I thought of the Mimic brushes. Here is all the Mimic brushes I got and there is a two inch wash. I'll just show you what it says on the package here. So it mimics the Squirrel and Kalinske Sable. And so that means it'll be a lot cheaper uh, than, than the actual genuine Squirrel. It is supposed to be a very good substitute from what I've heard from people for um, holding a good amount of water and pigment. So we've got a two inch wash, as I said and then a 30 round which looks awesome so I'm gonna um, you try to use as many of these as possible in this video three quarter inch flat which is great I'm starting to get used to using these a little bit more the flat brushes or angled brushes in the my loose watercolor flowers so uh, we'll see how that goes two inch round uh, 12 round four round, an eight, I believe, and a liner brush. These are available at Jerry's Artorama, but I cannot get them uh, from there, so I had to order those these on Amazon. And so I am first going to check out the detail in a watercolor uh, portrait painting. And the reason why I want to do that is to see how much water and how much pigment and how good it will be for details and uh, because uh, these for doing watercolor portraits hold too much water for me and I can't be as controlled and so um, I'm gonna see how they work with a controlled painting which would be my watercolor portraits and then after that I'm going to do a one of my just loose watercolor flower paintings just to see how they work for that so you can uh, make sure you watch for all of those. So there's going to be two different paintings in this one. I'll try to make it as, as um, short as possible. But it is, uh, as I said, two paintings. And I will time lapse some of it as well. So let's get started on this one. If you want to see the time lapse of the sketch here with um, some narration over top, just to show you kind of my process a little bit, I am going to do a separate video for that, so it will be time-lapsed, but it will be um, narrated to give a little bit of instruction. So I will put the link there as soon as it's ready. Um, the link will show up there. If it doesn't show up, that means I haven't edited the video for it yet. So I'm starting by using the Jane Davenport Neutrals palette, and I'm using the Sand, which is basically a yellow ochre. And I think I put some of the spice in there as well, which is um, kind of like a burnt sienna. And I just put down a little bit of color and then I wash it out and with a lot of water. So there's just a little bit of pigment starting with the shadows there. Um, and I build up those shadows as I go. I like to add some dramatic color and make my watercolor portraits a little bit stylized so they're not uh, supposed to be realistic. And I'm just uh, working with the just some bright colors and I've got my most, that palette there is mostly Daniel Smith. There is some uh, Sennelier Aquarelle in there and some Core and a couple of Windsor Newton. For the most part, they're Daniel Smith. And I'm just kind of using some Cerulean, some Quinacridone Magenta, and Quinacridone Coral. And I'm getting used to how these brushes work. So as I'm, narr I'm narrating this rather than uh, having, because I'm time lapsing it. So it just works better to just narrate it than to use whatever I'm talking about and make it a little bit quicker video. 
So what I found with these Mimic brushes is that they hold more water and pigment than what I'm used to, like with my Escada brushes, uh, but not as much as my silver black oval, um, my silver brushes. I always like to make that middle line just a little bit thicker in the middle and it gives it a look like maybe she has it opened her mouth open just slightly or maybe has more volume in the lips and so that's just a little technique you can try so I have to say that I had some trouble with the eyebrows here uh, just the pigments I went too dark too quickly and uh, with the dark hair that I added later it kind of looks a little better and uh, I was trying to not use the watercolor pencils which is what I usually use for the eyebrows but I just kind of keep having to work with them and then I'm just going on and defining the lips a little bit a lot more water and pigment than I anticipated so I'm having a little bit of problem with the eyes you can see the lower right eye there our right not her right um, is just that's way too much of a line way too thick and that's because I just was using a brush that I, it just had a lot of pigment so and a lot of water which is good to, uh, for when you need that and as I said, I hadn't used these brushes before, so you can definitely tell that I'm doing some experimenting and some figuring out things and finding out what works and what doesn't. And then I've decided to just go on in with some of my Derwent watercolors, watercolor pencils, uh, just because it wasn't, I couldn't get the brush going properly. And I usually indicate uh, the nose, some shadows in the nose and above the lip there with a little bit of a bluey purple color. I like to do the shadows in that kind of shade. You can see that I'm not happy with that one line under there, that quinacridone magenta. I'm not loving it, but I find a way to fix it later on and you will see what I do once I start adding flowers and stuff. So here I'm using the flat brush. This flat brush uh, is actually by Grumbacher, or no, it's Windsor & Newton. And it, I go in with the black, lamp black, and burnt umber. And it actually, I really liked how the hair works. And I really like using 
flat brushes for hair because you can really tell the movement of the hair in there. You can see that there. And I, um, I didn't use the one that came with the Mimic brush, the Mimic brush set, because it's really quite too large for this. So I decided to use a smaller one. So you can tell just by how I hold the brush and how I move the brush that it really affects how the hair flows. And honestly, I'm just experimenting here. And her hair is looking a little bit stringy. So I decide that I'm gonna add some flowers in a bit. And, but I do like how the movement works. I think it's really cool. I like her hair on the right side. I don't love what I did with the left side. And normally I would work with that a lot more than I did. But, or I'd plan it out. If it was a serious painting, I would, I would plan that out a lot more about her hair, but I was just kind of just fiddling around. And I had some water running. Because again, it holds a lot more water and pigment than what I'm used to. So it, it was just figuring out how to control it. And you can't see the shadows so much on the camera, but in real life, her face is shadowed more. You just don't see it. And I still go in and deepen those shadows a little bit as well. really am liking her coloring here like the hair and the eyebrows not the shade with the eyebrows but the color and her eyes and I think she just has like a really nice earthy look to her and I just needed some color <laughs> so then I wanted to add some flowers because I just wanted some color and then I added some flowers and that wasn't enough so I just kind of went crazy with the flowers I just wanted to see how it would work to just really put in some flowers there and I gotta say the Daniel Smith paints are really great for um, just adding color on top of dark the dark hair and some paints would not work as well for that it just wouldn't show and obviously some pigments work better than others so now she's looking like a real earthy girl with the flowers and it kind of hides the stringy hair that I have flying out there. And you can see that I put a leaf in front of her eye with that one um, quinacridone magenta under her eye that j I just didn't like. It just, it was too much. And I didn't anticipate such a heavy line when I went in there with the brush because again, I wasn't used to what I was doing. And here I'm just adding some eyelashes. The eyelashes really help to give her some life. And I always go in with some white paint over pens or just even some acrylic paint with my watercolor portrait to just bring out some sparkle and some light in the portrait. And I find it really helps. I don't ever go in on my watercolor flowers with acrylic paint, but I do like to do that in my portraits. And here I'm just splattering some paint. And I also kind of decided to do a little bit of dripping just to give it a little bit more of an abstract feel. And that's about it. So if you enjoyed this painting and this video, please hit the like button and uh, give it a thumbs up. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.